go back in time and allow me to set the scene for you. It's Saturday evening, March 28, 1992. Some of my Phi Sig fraternity brothers and other UK classmates and I are camped out in my apartment living room in Lexington, hoping Kentucky can just put up a good showing against Duke in the East Region Final. But after Sean Woods hits a ridiculously lucky shot over Christian Leitner with just 2.1 seconds remaining in overtime, we immediately plan our celebration. We're going to turn the corner of Euclid and Woodland on Kentucky's campus into Big Blue Nation's version of Mardi Gras. But when Leitner pulled off the most memorable shot in NCAA tournament history, I threw those plans to the wind and my full beer mug against the wall. And now, 25 years later, I don't actually hate Christian Leitner anymore, but I definitely hate that shot. We have 7.8 seconds left. What made the game so great was whoever got the last chance won the basketball game. Woods. looked like an upset and all the Kentucky fans would head home happy and then it happened one of the defining moments in college sports history the moment when hate and great became one I'm thinking coach K is gonna draw up a great play and we'll have a chance to win the game on a buzzer beater we talked about Grant can you throw the ball 75 feet yeah I can make the pass and then he asked Christian can you make the shot and Christian doesn't say, yes, I can do it. Yeah. He says, coach, if Grant throws a good pass, I'll catch it. Right before the ref handed Grant the ball, I said to myself, I don't have to rush. It's 2.1 seconds. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. I was screaming at the TV. I remember that was like my proudest moment as a Duke basketball fan. I go back to the fact that he never should have been in that game. And later, kicked it. Should he have been out of the game? Well, of course he should have been out of the game. But he's Christian Leitner and he plays for Duke and he wasn't out of the game. What can make someone more hateable than stepping on another player? Staying in the game, shooting perfectly from the floor, and hitting the most clutch shot of all time. I mean, come on. That is epic proportions, hateable athlete. Hey, D is kind. He made it. Hey, he's a fucker! I can understand them hating me for that play. They were the underdog, and there was already a lot of Duke haters. So um, I can see why that animosity is there. That'll be played long after we're all gone. It's one of the iconic moments in sports history, and it's not surprising when you know the guy that it was him. He didn't fear failing. You know, he didn't fear that. He wanted the ball in his hands. Mm. You're still not over that, are you? I'm not over the emotion that I felt then. Like, it doesn't bother me that Kentucky lost that game because it's one of the greatest basketball games ever played, and you were involved in it. So to that is a big deal. But the emotion that I felt. I'll never forget that moment. How they lost. Yeah, it, it was. If they lost by 10, we don't care. We yeah. really don't care. But to think that we had it won, and then of all people, Christian Leitner to hit the shot. Yeah, Kentucky fans don't get over that emotion. No. This dude was there. He was there. He lived it. He was there. Yeah. Jay Billis, Jay Williams, you were seven. Ten? <laughs> seven. You were seven. Was that the moment you decided you were going to be a Duke player? No, no, it, it wasn't. I didn't. I, I really didn't pay attention to Duke basketball growing up. I was more of a John Thompson, Georgetown, Georgetown fan. I was from Jersey. I, I didn't really get. Sorry, I didn't really start paying attention to all this stuff until I was 17, 18. Wow. Kind of hearing it for the first time. Jay, you were assistant coach for Coach K then, and we've heard Coach K say, "We're, we're going to win this game. We're going to win this game." We heard this story, but what was the level of belief in that moment that this whole thing was going to? come off the way it did with perfect pass from Grant, later taking a dribble, turn around and hitting it. Like, you really believed that was going to happen? I think the level of belief changed <laughs> from, the, from the start of the huddle to the end. Okay. Because after Sean Woods hit that, banked that shot in and the players were walking back, I mean, it was natural to think that, that hey, we've had a great year. Everyone I mean, thought it was over, it was gonna, right? how, how often do you see a team score with two seconds left and you've got to go length of the floor? 
So it looked pretty grim. And the, I think the players, if I remember right, their, their shoulders were a little slumped when they came over. But when they left the huddle, mm -hmm. um, they were ready to go. And look, I, I, the belief part, I, I think it's, it's imperative. Not that, that you know, you're going to, you can't win without it. I think it was still a low percentage chance for, for that to happen. But without the belief that you're going to do it, it was zero, absolute zero. And I do think that that, that play w was part of, of changing the way coaches looked at things and how they were going to guard that. Because when the ball was in the air, mm -hmm. last thing Rick Pitino told his teams, don't foul. Well, that's when why the don't, ball's don't in the air, now, now coach is saying, hey, that's a loose ball. Go get it. Go get yeah. it. If you yeah, climb sure. somebody's back, so what? Go get yeah. it. Yeah. Jay, you've played in games with huge emotion. You look back at what Leitner was able to do, not just in the final 2.1. He didn't miss a shot from the floor or from the, from the free throw line. How incredible is that 25 years later that he was that efficient in a game of that magnitude? It's beyond incredible. And I think one of the things watching that little segment and watching feedback, obviously, on this for the past 20 years is that, you know, a lot of players in that situation said, give me the ball, I'll make the shot. Like, he didn't set that expectation on himself. He just said... I'll make the catch. You know, pass them, give me a good pass, and I'll make the catch. I think he knew in his mind he'll make the shot, but just saying, okay, I, I can just make the catch, and I'll let the rest take care of itself. Yeah. He's, I'll, I'll say this about later. Even doing fantasy camps now, there's still nobody confident, well, maybe JB next to me, who has the confidence <laughs> level like of Leitner. Yeah. I mean, he still to this yeah. day kind of exudes that Listen, confidence. Listen, he was here two years ago to promote the 30 for 30, and I said, let's try it again. Let's do it again. So I, we got a basketball on one end of the studio. He's standing. 20 feet away, small ball, small rim. He takes a dribble, turns around, throws it up, nails it. Coach K said one thing about him when he made a couple of free throws, I think it was against UNLV. We were watching tape of it, and he turns around and says to the assistants, um, he, will, he may miss, but he'll never choke. Mm. And, and, and I thought that, that, yeah, was, that, that, that encapsulated Leitner yeah. uh, better than anything I've heard. One of the great moments in tournament history. By the way, for the record, I also don't hate either of you. Just because you went to do it. Okay, I, I hope you're still I okay. Are you okay? I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. And if we win today, I wouldn't Bounce be back. thinking about that game for 25 <laughs> just, years ago. Just for the record, we don't care anyway. Yeah. I know, because you're Duke. I get it. Totally get it. <laughs>